Alright guys, welcome back. I hope you all had a very, very good Christmas and a very good New Year. I know I did. I had a very, very busy Christmas, to say the least. Um, as you might have noticed from the, the lack of new content on this channel. But now I'm back and ready to start regularly pumping out these videos again. Now that Christmas is out of the way. Uh, Shoutouts to all my new subscribers. There's like 500 of you guys now. That's absolutely ridiculous. I didn't think this was going to be anywhere near as popular as it's turning out to be. So that's really cool. I'm pretty motivated now just to get more of this content out to you guys as quick as I can. So before I get into this video, I was just going to say like... Um, what I'm planning to do, whether or not it'll work out this way or not, is basically record new content more or less every weekend and then put that content out through throughout the week so that hopefully hopefully what that'll do is create kind of a constant source or a constant stream of like uh, of new content for you guys so there's not sort of this huge space of time where you you're not getting any any uh, new tutorials or anything like that. So, that's the plan. Um, what it is we're going to be looking at today is uh, following on from our last tutorial on uh, basic projectiles. Is uh, I promised a follow-up to that video where I would explain a few more slightly in-depth things to do with projectiles. I'm actually going to explain something that's actually, I suppose, quite a bit simple, but not... It does go a little bit further than what we had before. Just for a few little things that you might want to do with your shooting mechanic if you are making a top-down shooter just based on top-down shooters that are already out there. Because if I run the game that we had at the end of the last tutorial, assuming it compiles any time today... There we go. Okay, so assuming, you know, what we had before was this, where you could move around and you press space, and every time you press space, it would shoot. But if you held space, you know, you you only got one projectile every time you press space. Now, that's not really, I mean, sure, I mean, maybe you, maybe that's how you want your game to be. If you, if you want to have to, to match space for something, or you have to match your button or whatever, then you've already got the system you want. But for a lot of top-down shooters, what people will typically do is have a system whereby they you hold the button down and you get a constant stream of bullets. In fact, a lot of shooters I played recently have it. You don't even have to press a button because <laughs> optimally you're, you're you're always firing anyway. So some games have actually literally stepped them and removed that uh, requirement entirely, which might be a thing to think about. But that's uh, more of a game design thing. But either way, I was going to show you guys. First of all, just how to create that kind of system, whereby while you're holding space, you're constantly shooting. I mean, you might, from what you've learned before, uh, be able to do this in the sense that you might think, well, if I repeat the code for shooting, which is in our, our space thing, instance create, you know, this uh, instance create bullet thing, if we just put that into the step event, uh, under like a keyboard check for vk underscore space or something like that or you know and then that would that would surely just create a bullet every frame and it would but that's probably still not what you want because you know, you'd, you'd then be firing almost this constant beam of bullets out and you probably want some kind of delay or some kind of space in there so this gives me a good opportunity to teach you guys about alarms because this is the way I would do it anyway I mean there's a number of ways you could do this you could do it in the step event use counters or all kinds of things but the easiest way to do most sort of like repeated uh, timing based um, things in your game is to use a uh, thing called things called alarms um, so let me just sort of demonstrate first of all how we would start doing this as you may have noticed I've made the font a lot bigger in the execute code window now so hopefully I won't have to do quite as much sort of deep zooming in stuff for you guys to be able to see exactly what's going on in the code but instead of this line here I mean we'll leave this line here for a second because we'll want to copy and paste it in a minute but uh, what we're going to do instead of this line of code is set up an alarm that whenever that alarm goes off we'll fire our bullet instead of firing our bullet whenever whenever we press the spacebar. So um, what an alarm is, 
is an event, basically, I suppose is the best way of describing it. So it's one of these like events over here that is basically on a timer that you set based on a number of frames. So if I set something like alarm 0 equals 5, for example, um, when now that would set our zeroth alarm. It counts to something like ten, I think. But like the very first one is zero, so that's the only one we need at the moment. Um, so we set alarm number zero to be five, and then five frames from when we set that, the alarm would go off, and um, then the event, the actions in the event that we can add over here. Like if I just close this quickly, add event alarm zero. Like all these actions here now, now that this alarm zero would here would go off. However, I mean, that's not exactly how we need to do it, though. What we need to do is say, if alarm 0 is equal to minus 1. Now, that might be a bit confusing, but so let me explain what that means. Um, what alarm does when we set it to something like 5 or 10, um, will every frame of your game, um, the alarm will tick down by 1 until it hits zero. Uh, when your alarm hits zero, um, all the actions go off, um, and then the alarm is set to minus one, which means that it's not counting down anymore, it's not counting, it's not going to do anything, and so on and so forth. If we set that to zero, it would be when the alarm triggers, that's not what we want. We want, we want to know when the alarm is not set. So when the alarm is not being set, we set the alarm to five when we're pressing the spacebar. And in fact, we don't want to use the press event anymore now. What we want to do is use just the uh, just the space event. So whenever this button is being held, from now on we want to say, if the alarm zero is not set, then set it to five frames. So five frames from when we press the spacebar, all the things in alarm zero will go off. So what we need that to be is simply this line of code, which is the, the line where it shoots our bullet. So if we remove that now, we go to alarm zero, code, execute code, and put that line of code in there. And then what we also need to do, um, oh no, no, I think that should be it actually, if I remember correctly. Um, Okay, cool. So now if I press spacebar, yeah, and you hold spacebar, you can see that there's now a delay um, in between each bullet, but we're firing a constant stream of bullets out, which is probably, you know, a much better system for if you're doing a top-down shooter. Um, so, I mean, now you've got that, I mean, you can vary the space in between these bullets just by changing the length of time on your alarm. So if you go to your object player and you say, when you press space, um, if the alarm isn't set yet, set it to, I don't know, 9, then when we compile that, um, you can see the distance between each bullet is much larger than it was before. Um, so, now that we've done that, something uh, we can look at doing now is um, an effect that's in a lot of top-down shooters, which is when you collect upgrades and stuff especially. You don't just fire one stream of bullets, you would often fire like multiple streams of bullets and sometimes those bullets would go like in different directions and you create like this like cone of like uh, streams of bullets. So I mean that's a very easy effect to replicate in Game Maker as well. So if I show you how to do that I mean you'll start to get, explain a few more concepts and uh, you'll be able to understand how to create some of these sort of special effects by yourself. So. But at the moment what we do whenever the alarm goes off is we fire a single bullet. Now say we don't want to do that, we want to fire three bullets that all go in like a, a, like a cone shape of directions. So I mean the first thing we need to do is simply copy this line of code like three times. So well, twice. Um, so now we create three bullets instead of uh, one. Obviously though what this will do is we'll create them in the exact same place and they'll fire at the exact same speed in the exact same direction so it'll just look like they kind of overlap at the moment. 
So we need to be able to do things to these different bullets to make them go in different directions or behave differently. So the way we can do that is uh, by using sort of a, a special little trick you can do with instance create, which is um, if I do this, uh, that's equally as valid a line of code as this one is. Now what that says is bullet one equals instance create x y minus 16 object bullet. What that means is when we create uh, this bullet, we assign that bullet to the variable bullet1. So if we do anything in this code now, like if this object makes a reference to bullet1, it's making a reference to this object that it's just created. And we can do the same thing with these liners of code. So we can have bullet2, bullet3. So now we've got bullet1, bullet2, and bullet3 that are being created and now what we can do is simply set bullet2 dot direction um, equals and now this number one might confuse you a little bit but I'm gonna say a hundred and bullet three I'm gonna set the direction to be 80 now uh, how direction works is like if you're if you don't have like direction is basically like the the second component of your object's velocity you know everything has a direction and a speed so i mean if we set our direction to be zero its default direction when its speed is raised is to just move to the right like if you just set speed if you don't set h speed and you don't set v speed you just set speed to be a value and um it will travel your object will travel in that speed uh, in the direction that is your direction variable at whatever you set your speed to. So now direction is a bit weird in that it's in like degrees but it counts sort of counterclockwise from right. It's really confusing. I'm not really sure how why it's laid out this way but like basically zero, a direction of zero would be uh, straight to the right. Um, a direction of 90 would be straight up. Uh, 180 would be left. 270 would be down. So like it's 360 degrees going counterclockwise from right, which is very strange. You would expect it to at least be clockwise, so if it started at right, it would go something like 0, 90, 180, 270. Personally, I always expect it to be like 0 to be straight up, and then like 90 would be right, and then like 180 would be down and so on. But that's... don't ask me why it's laid out that way, it just is, and... Um, so the way we want to shoot up is to shoot, so to shoot directly up we would shoot 90 degrees up, but we want to give bullet 2 and bullet 3 a little bit of an offset. So we we're going to set them to 180 respectively, and bullet 1 direction can equal 90. Now of course this means we need to make a slight change in our bullet object, so that instead of setting our v-speed to be minus 8, we're just setting um, our speed to be 8 so that it takes the direction that we're setting and it just it goes it goes with that direction so okay now if we hit a 5 now when we press space yep we're creating this this stream this cone stream of bullets that are now spreading out and shooting like in a big arc that's the sort of thing you might do when you collect like an upgrade or something in your game I mean, if you're using, you've seen how I use if statements and things like that, you'll probably be able to work out how to do that kind of thing fairly soon. And that's that. So that's just a couple of little things about shooting um, that you could do a little bit differently. And it's just, you know, just to give you a little bit of inspiration, maybe a few sort of ideas on how you can kind of modify and change the way your ship shoots and your top-down shooter. Um, and hopefully gives you a basic understanding of how, like, assigning an instance you create to a variable works, so on bullet 1, bullet 2, and so on, and how uh, how direction and speed works, and hopefully how um, alarms work. Alarms are a very important thing to understand, they're incredibly useful. So yeah, that's that, that's some more advanced sort of uh, shooting tips for you there, and uh, I'll see you next time guys.